What's happening YouTube? Welcome to KP Tutorial 5. Let's get some nodes of scrolling. Right, we're just going to get right into this. Okay, because it's going to be a bit of a longer tutorial. Okay, so we're going to put the last section in a try accept block. Alright, just to catch um, any errors that we may get that may crash our program. Alright, so we just have to indent that. And we're going to put some dummy nodes for now on our scroll view. Okay, so we're going to propagate the scroll view with some dummy nodes um, in the first part of this tutorial. And um, afterwards, after we've got an understanding of that, we're going to actually propagate it with actual nodes on our network. All right. So what we do is we will do a full eye in X range 255. Okay, and we want to add a widget, which is going to be a button to the nodes box layout. Okay, and the text is going to be the number of the dummy node. Okay, simple as that. That's all it is. So let's try that. And we're not getting any scrolling. That's no good. Why is this? Because we haven't set up any um, size for the node itself. So it's got nothing to scroll. Okay. So let's put a height. And let's put this to SP, which I think is scaled pixels. But you're more than welcome to check out the Kivi, um, the Kivi documentation to check that out and see what sort of layout you like. Right, I'm going to do a self.h equals the number of nodes and self.nodes.size is going to be equal to one as a width and the height is going to be self.h times 150 mm, that should be a little bit better let's check that out and that's what we've got we've got 255 nodes there that are scrolling all right we can scroll through all of them and they're spinning oh yeah they're spinning they're spinning i'm not going to go all the way through because it's going to take me half an hour i think uh but take my word for it there's 255 there or oh, 54 Right, so what's next? Let's um, get rid of this and let's actually propagate this with um, a couple of actual devices. Now, I haven't got 254 nodes on my network. Uh, I may have three or four at the moment that are up. So we'll just see how it goes. All right. Now, obviously, if there's not enough uh, enough nodes for it to scroll, then it won't scroll. It doesn't have to because it's got enough space for it to display what it needs to. All right. But what we're going to do is we're going to add another button. All right, to the GUI, and it's going to take this section of the GUI there. All right, and it's going to be the ARP scan. We're going to give it an ID. It's going to be actually let's change this. Uh, yeah, let's change the name of that. Yeah, let's copy. And let's copy that. And let's change the text to scan. Lion. Or. Uh, nah, that looks rubbish. Let's do something else. Let's do up scan. Okay, so we know it's an um, art request. All right, because future uh, future tutorials are going to be uh, scanning the network using other means. All right. Obviously, it doesn't do anything at the moment because we haven't defined the function. Okay, but the button's there, which is good. We can press it. We set it for half an hour pressing it. Might get some pizza delivered. Right. 
let's define the function we need okay let's neaten that up and let's do a death land scan actually I am going to change the name of this to ARP scan all right okay you can name it whatever you you want once again all right I do encourage you guys to uh, just play around and just um, you know try and take your own roads all right so IP calls now I know this is going to be 192.168.10. obviously for your subnet it's probably going to be different or it may not be right so I'm going to do a smaller range because I know that um, the devices on my network are not going to take up anything past 20 at the moment so I'm going to do that and it's basically just the code that we used for the creating op packets tutorial alright but we're going to um, utilize Kivi to display the output okay so we do destination is broadcast slash op because it's an op packet uh, IP destination is equal to IP plus string I and the hardware destination is to everybody on the network okay <clears throat> and now we just do an up response is equal to SRP1 and then up request comma timeout equal to one okay and verbose now this is going to be a slow scan all right in the next tutorial we're going to be threading this function all right so it's super fast okay i'm not going to do it in this tutorial because it's going to make the tutorial a little bit too long all right so we just do if arp response so if there is a response i want you to um, display this on my scroll view okay so I can have some options of what to do so we do self knows that add widget button and now the text is going to be we're gonna get a bit funky now we're gonna format the text add some color and we're gonna make it green and let's see what we can do here let's make it italic as well for host is up the host is wide awake and we close off the italics there and close off the color Excuse me, let's make this a bit neater, let's take it to another line. Now what do we need? We need the IP and Mac. That would be nice. We're going to be adding some more information on the nodes later. Such as possibly making a model of the of the device. Okay. And um, host by name and things like that. And also some design features. I might... Um, I might provide you guys with a, uh, a pre-made uh, background for the buttons so they're see-through if you if you can't do that or you don't know how I might provide it uh, as a download just to make it look a bit better as my original network scanner alright so let's close this off and we've got IP and then we've got the placeholder remember which is going to be the IP so we're going to format art response Up response. Okay, and then dot p source. P source. Uh, 
and basically we just um, we do the same for the Mac okay let's, let's make this a bit neater as well let's do a new line and we do a color and green let's take this down okay and we do Mac and then the placeholder and then close off the color and then dot format art response dot hw source yes okay that looks good now I'm missing something here tell me what it is shout it at the screen I can't hear you shout it at the screen there's something wrong here if I run this something's going to go wrong what is it um right well first of all we need to attach it to the button okay but that's not what I'm referring to but let's attach it to the button the actual function which would help up scan but there's still something wrong which we haven't done okay and it's not this either but we're going to do a self dot nodes dot clear widget now we need to clear the box before uh, the buttons pressed again because it's just going to propagate the same buttons and it's going to get cluttered and it's going to look stupid so we need to clear the box each time the button's pressed all right so if we try and run this all right we run if config everything looks fine we run up scan we wait a little bit because we're not using threading so if you want have a cup of coffee have a little sip lizard and what is this unreadable what was I missing I was missing markup equals true and also we did not size the buttons okay so let's add a little font size to this now this will um, probably uh, determine it be determined to your screen size and your laptop or whatever you're using to for these tutorials all right so just play around obviously if you're going to be um, catering to to um, clients or if you want to make software for other people you want to make it as um, as um, visibly visibly visua visually nice as possible and typing and talking at the same time self dot nose dot size equals visually 200 by 400 okay now that should look a bit better there so we run if config and wrap the up scan and have another sip of coffee Now, there's a couple more things we need to add here. I want to disable the ARP scan button, but let's just wait until this propagates. I want to disable the ARP scan button when when the um, thing is launched, and there we go. All right, so that looks a lot better. It can look better than that, which we're going to do. But um, when the tool's launched, I don't want the ARP scan button to be available until if config is pressed. So what I'm going to do is. I'm going to put disabled equals true and then once if config is pressed it's equaled false <coughs> so we do it here and also above this uh, function as you can see there's a variable self.my ip equals an empty string alright I put that there so that the app doesn't crash in case 
you guys choose to do uh, the following after after I finish this line. Let me just import. Obviously, we need to import the widget so that we can use it. So self dot scan lan equals self dot id scan lan. Okay, and now we can enable it through our function. So we do scan lan dot disabled equals false. <coughs> now that and what I was referring to earlier is this here. Okay. And this is in case um, you guys want to do it another way. I mean, depending on uh, if you're going to put a subnet function in there, that's cool. You can take all this out. And we can just assign the self.myip variable and reference it as indexed from 5 until the 16th character. Okay. Which will be exactly the same thing. So we run fconfig. Runs perfectly. And we scan the LAN, and it should be coming up right about now ish. Fast forward, <laughs> and there we go. Okay, so we've got two hosts at the moment, which is lovely. We press the buttons, buttons are pressable, and it's perfect. Perfect. I used to play Street Fighter. So I love that game. Anyway, so okay, in the next one we're going to be threading this function to make it faster, and we're going to be doing all sorts of stuff. And as you can see, there's a couple more nodes there. I don't know who that is. I'm going to find out. <laughs> all right, so that's it. Thanks for watching. In the next tutorial, we'll be threading our scan to make it faster, and we'll be doing a lot more. All right. If you like the video, subscribe and hit the thumbs up. I will appreciate it. Keep coding. Keep being awesome. See ya.